Right, he is 26. He's from Aldershot. He loves watching cartoons. His first car was a VW Polo, and he met the girl who would eventually become his wife when he was only 11. And as it happens, Dan TDM, or Daniel Middleton, is the world's highest earning YouTuber this year after making more than £12 million in the last 12 months. He became successful by streaming videos of himself playing Pokemon and then Minecraft. Your children probably watch them. Uh, I've got so many tweets from mum saying, oh no, I'll have to video this, I'll have to record this so we can watch it on catch up later when the kids get back from school. He has more than 16 million subscribers worldwide and his channel, which was originally aimed at five to 10 year olds, has had more than 10 billion views for all his videos. Hello, how are you? Hi, I'm good, thank you. Very thank good. you very much for coming on our programme. So, please tell our audience, how do you go from working in a supermarket five years ago to earning more than 12 million pounds this year? Uh, part of me is not sure. I just do something that I absolutely love and put it out there for, for anyone to watch. And it turns out a lot of people like what I do, which is, I can't ask for more than that. It's, mm -hmm. it's crazy. You, effectively, you are an entrepreneur. You craft and edit your videos. You come up with the ideas for them, obviously. So there's a creative side to it as well. There's a technical side. Then you upload them yourself. You sell merchandise. You go on tour. In that sense, you are an example of a British success story. Are you treated as a successful entrepreneur or are people a bit sniffy about what you do? I think both. It depends. It depends. Like YouTube is a very new thing. As a website, it's not that old in the grand scheme of things as well, like compared to TV. Mm. So people can be make assumptions about what I do when they see a 20 minute video. They maybe think it takes 20 minutes to make, which is not the case. <laughs> it's completely the opposite. Um, so yeah, I guess there is some kind of misconceptions to what I actually do. Mm. Do you think people go, oh, well, God, anyone can make a video and whack it up on YouTube mm -hmm. and make a million. Do you, do you think, do you get that kind of attitude? Yeah, I guess that's partly true. I, I did that, that's how I started. I just made, made videos and put them up for people to see and if people watched them, then that was great. Mm. Uh, so that's kind of partly true. <laughs> mm. But do you feel like a businessman or not? Yes. Do you? I guess I do. I've had to learn along the way. Obviously, mm. making videos is my main thing. Mm. So, but when you branch out into, say, merchandising, and then especially with the tour as well, there's a very steep learning curve where mm. I had to obviously negotiate deals. And yeah, I guess there is that, that part of business when you start mm. branching further than just making the videos. In the last couple of weeks, you've posted a video about finding the worst flavor of a jelly bean, yeah. which has had almost 4 million views. <laughs> Let's just have a quick look at this video. I am going to regret this. Oh, they do not look like jelly beans at all. They look like little rocks of sour. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to go get a bowl. Be right back. I've got one. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh they, they smell. Oh, they do not smell good. <laughs> I haven't even put them in my mouth yet and they smell disgusting. Right, sour jelly beans are going in. Let's mix them up. Mix them up real nice. And just with the other video, we're going to throw it back again and play exactly the same game. I'm going to be playing Would You Rather. So the way this works is, here are the rules. We play Would You Rather, but instead of choosing what I would pick, I need to guess what everyone else would pick. The majority vote. So, 4 million views. Why, yeah. what is it about that that is so popular, do you think? Uh, I think specifically that video, people want to see you eat things. Like those jelly beans, there were blood flavours, mm. there was, I think there was a squid flavour as well. Snot flavour. The snot flavour, yeah. Mm. Uh, people want to see you, they want to see someone eating them because they won't necessarily want to do it themselves. Mm. And it's just funny to watch the reactions, I guess. Do you ever struggle for ideas for your videos? Um, not really. That one randomly. So, the box of jelly beans, my, um, my mother-in-law actually bought me them for my birthday and I was like, you know what, this is actually make a great video idea. So video ideas can come from literally anywhere. Mm. Uh, if I ever struggle for ideas, I go online, ask my fans, uh, my fans can ask me questions. Mm. There's so much out there that can help me if I am struggling for ideas. Mm. But with the beauty of the internet, it's pretty much unlimited. The question everyone wants to know is, including young kids, because they now say things like, when I grow up, I want to be a YouTuber. Yeah. How do you actually make your money as a YouTuber? Please talk us through that. The way it works is, I'm sure most people that watch YouTube have experienced the ads that play either before a video, beside a video, or come up during a video, which usually have the skip ad on them. Mm -hmm. Those are what we get paid for. So advertisers pay YouTube to display those ads, and then we get paid a proportion of that when it's displayed on our video. So we get paid 
off the views, basically. Right. And how many... How long was it before advertisers like, you know, furniture stores mm -hmm. would come to... You know, how many views did you have before they came to you and said, actually, we want to put an ad on here and pay you for the privilege? Well, YouTube kind of manages that yourself. You don't right. necessarily have the control over the ads. They have an algorithm that displays appropriate ads to the person watching. So similar to other things like Facebook and stuff, mm. you get ads depending on what your browsing history is and stuff like that. So YouTube manages all that. You just get a cut of that mm. after that happens. So you don't actually manage that at all. Mm. You talked about your fans. Your audience is predominantly children and young teens. Mm -hmm. How much responsibility do you feel towards those youngsters? Loads. Yeah, absolutely loads. I, I don't think... It'd be weird not to feel any responsibility because, especially when you're meeting them face to face and the amount that I've met as well, I've met so many during the tour, mm. uh, you realise how much the videos actually mean to them and, more importantly, the parents as well. So mm. I've got a really good... I feel like I've got a good, re really good rapport with parents. Mm. They always say that I'm a YouTuber that they can feel safe just letting their kids watch. They watch together. They accidentally become fans as well. It's, mm. it's great. Yeah, and you, I mean, you will have seen Jack Maynard recently apologising for homophobic and racist mm. language that he'd used in the past online. Another very successful YouTuber had to leave I'm a Celebrity. Um, have you checked your past online history for any comments that might be dredged up now that you're successful? Uh, I like to think I'm just a decent person anyway, so I don't have anything that people could find. So I think you do just have to be careful what you put out there, mm. regardless of whether you're a YouTuber or not. If you're, if you put something online, it's, it's essentially there forever. You don't know who's screenshotted it, who's kept it. So just, yeah, just be careful in general, not necessarily if you're well known, if you're, if you're just putting a post, post on your Facebook, mm. just be super careful. Yeah. Or be just, and be, just be nice. Be nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How about that? Uh, my 13-year-old wants to know if you have effectively become an advert for certain games like Minecraft or Pokemon, or are you independent? Um, both. So predominantly, like 99% of my content, I just choose to play whatever. Mm. Uh, every now and then, a company will approach me with a game that, say, they offer me like an early gameplay to play, and they'll pay me for that. So it's like if someone gets paid to advertise Coke or something like that, mm. it's exactly the same. But most of the time, I'm offering content on someone's video games, so they let me make right. videos on their game. Yeah. Um, he wants to know if, if Minecraft pay, play you to, to play Minecraft. No. Sorry, don't. pay you to play <laughs> Minecraft. No, they just have a really good rapport with everyone. They literally have in their t terms and conditions, you can make whatever content you mm. like with it. You will know the, 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 the chatter around YouTube recently is that it, it can be unsafe, actually, for children mm -hmm. and young people, particularly recently. Last week on the programme, we talked to the police warning about live streaming, kids live streaming, and the kind of comments they were getting from paedophiles, suggesting that they remove items of clothing, for mm -hmm. example. What do you say about that? I would say with anything that's popular, be it YouTube or just the internet in general, people are going to use it for the wrong reasons, no matter what it is. So I think the key thing is to just keep an eye on what your kids are doing online. Don't let them have their own devices. Well, let them have their own devices, but don't leave them to their own devices. Right. Um, you should just be careful. Firewalls, there's great things in terms of YouTube. There's YouTube Kids app, which is very good at filtering content, which is only safe for kids, and they're very, very strict on what they allow on that app. Yeah. Um, there's lots of ways to parental control most things and most apps. So experience it with your kids and just keep an eye on what they're doing, basically. Mm. And what do you say is the good that comes from YouTube and the internet generally? Uh, it's great entertainment. There's lots, there's so many people doing it nowadays that there's just so many good ideas that come out every single day, every second of every day. There's countless hours uploaded every day. So it's just great entertainment that's made by, I guess, ordinary people, which is awesome. There's only one woman on the YouTube rich list and she's at number 10. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is? Why aren't there more successful female YouTubers? I, I personally know loads of female YouTubers. I don't think there's a specific reason why there was only one female. I don't see a gender gap in YouTube at all, because mm. literally anyone can do it. In terms of the list, I think six out of ten of them were gamers, which generally just generate higher views because they can upload I don't know, between one and three videos every single day, mm. and they're longer content as well, so they make more money. They can do. So I think... I guess people that, I don't know, using Zoella for an example, she doesn't mm. upload as often as a gamer can, so she won't generate the views, which doesn't generate the income, which is it's my theory on the list. Mm. <laughs> I mean, she was criticised, really, for selling an advent calendar for 50 quid, mm -hmm. criticised by some of her fans. You've got to be aware of that stuff when you're selling merch, don't you? 
Yeah, you do have to be careful. Um, I think that's just coming back to what we were talking about before mm. about just making sure that you've thought everything through very, very carefully. If someone's making a decision on your behalf, make sure you trust them, make sure you've got everything in place that you're confident that everything you put out there that has your name attached mm. to it is what you believe in. Okay. You're going to be doing this when you're 50? Eating uh, <laughs> funny flavoured jelly beans? We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very so. much. Thank you for coming on the programme. Nice to meet you. Cheers.